Hi everyone, Brooke here and welcome back to my channel. Today you will be embarking on part 3 of the Haynes Hunter Motor Replacement Series. In today's episode, we fit the new Verado to the transom, try and find the appropriate rigging and prepare the transom for its final paint. Swear your love is ecstasy Get high when you're next to me I'm in the clouds Your touch is my remedy Lose all of my sanity I love the sound when you tell me I'm the only one Where you got me feeling makes me come undone Baby, you make it look easy At the top, but you can meet me Eyes are shining like So after all our measurements, we came to the conclusion that we were going to drill our top holes fairly high up in the transom so that we still had four more bolt holes to adjust the motor up. She's on. Once we had the motor on and the bolts tightened up, we could trim the motor in and see exactly where it needed to be. We can go up a hole. So here Dennis and I are discussing what height the motor should actually be. As a sort of rule of thumb, the anti-cavitation plate should be just in line with the bottom of the hull, or in line with the trajectory of the water flow, so slightly above the bottom of the hull, so the motor should go up one or two more holes. Next we put the outboard in the trimmed up position, so we could discuss what we were going to do with the splash well. We wanted to see if some of the original inboard engine cover could be reused. I might not have to cut anything away from that thing. Obviously, still do the splash well, but that part there might not have to be cut away. We knew that some of it would need refabricating, but we weren't sure on how much. Much to our delight, some of the original fiberglassing could be reused, and Dennis would only have to do a small fabrication for the splash well. Unfortunately, our reconditioned outboard didn't come with any of the running gear or rigging that we needed. 
So on a whim, we purchased a rundown 200 that had most of the rigging components that we needed. This was going to be the quickest possible option for us, because if we ordered all that rigging from a company, it could take weeks to come in. So we got to work. We took this outboard off this boat and collected all the components we needed to start our motor. Or so we thought. Needless to say, we ended up ordering all the rigging and running gear that we needed. But that wasn't going to stop us from other parts of the project, like getting the rest of the transom prepared for its final paint. There was still a lot to do here, like removing any trimmings, the swim decks, the anti-fouling, and anything else that needed to come off before painting. Now that the back of the transom was cleared, Dennis could start prepping these areas. He gave the surface a really good sand over. And then any of the existing screw holes in the transom that we didn't need anymore were filled with a resin and cavasil filler. These were then shaved down flat and filled again. Prepping these areas so they're glassy smooth is really important for the final finish. So there was a fair bit more bogging and sanding to do. Dennis is prepping a support to put in place for the splash well. This little piece of marine ply is sanded down and then coated in the polyester unwaxed resin. Dennis is about to screw the splash well support in place, but first of all he puts a coat of resin over the two surfaces. Using four stainless steel screws, he fixes it to the transom. Then he gives the whole area another coat in the resin, followed by a coat of flow coat to help the resin cure. This was then sanded before the next process. The transom is now ready for primer and final coats. As you can see, it's already got one coat of Joton High Build Primer on it. In between each coat, it's given a gentle sand in preparation for the next coat. The final sand before the top coat is the most important. Using a super light sandpaper, I inspect the job with a fluoro light. Once we're happy with the finish, the job is cleaned off with a tacking cloth so there's no dust left on the project. For the final two coats, Dennis is using Joton Hardtop Polyurethane. This can take up to five days to cure, so that would give us plenty of time to work on the transom splash well. I hope you're all enjoying the Haynes Hunter motor replacement series, and I've broken it down into bite-sized chunks for you. If you're enjoying it, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for the continuing episodes. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one.